so Matthew, I want to turn it over to you more or less along the same lines. You've taken the route both of leadership and then entrepreneurship as well, which is a whole different animal in itself. Um, can you speak to how being you know, a female leader, especially in 2020 and then in the last 30 years going up the ranks, how you've met some sort of unique challenges that, that maybe your male colleagues may not have had to deal with? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, there are a number of challenges, right? I think it is all about confidence, Patty. I mean, you mentioned that, right? You have to have that confidence in the message you, you're conveying, but also focusing on the objective. And I think it's really important that you don't, you know, think about all the little hurdles that you're going to go come across. But at the end of the day, what is that final objective that you're trying to get across? And it's no matter what position or what job you have, I always tell my mentees that, you know, uh, don't worry about the little things. Always keep your eye on the goal. Building confidence is not easy. It's something that you um, focusing on continuous improvement is really important for me. When you come across a situation, I always say, stop and think about what can you learn from that particular situation in a proactive manner, right? And how can you apply those learnings to the next situation? And I think we all do it every single day. But I think it, proactively, it's a journey. You know, it's not a cliche. It truly is a journey. The thing that I also uh, try to teach my, my daughter and also the people that I mentored through various programs like uh, One Million Degrees and others is that don't go alone. Don't duke it out on your own in front of the whole room. You know, do your groundwork before the meeting, right? You have to go in with some sponsorship, with some support. If you haven't laid it out before, uh, before the meeting, you know, there is a chance that things are not going to go well, whether you're a woman or a man. So the more we prepare and think about that in advance and, and lay the groundwork with uh, political sponsorship, the better chance we are that we will get uh, what we want out of a situation. So when I bring up an excellent point there, the politics of uh, the workplace, and they are, they are difficult as it is, but for women especially, can you speak to uh, just navigating that and the importance of allies? in the workforce to find your success? I'd be happy to go as I refer to those as the unwritten rules that you have to figure out when you're within an organization. So what are those unwritten rules? And, and some of it has to do with the office politics and how do you deal with it and, and get through. And there's not a perfect answer to it, but the sponsorship or the support network or the allies are probably the best way to, to figure your way through the maze of political uh, office politics. Mm -hmm. So that has been usually uh, my direction as we have new folks, men or women, joining the organization of those unwritten rules and how to navigate. The onus of domestic responsibilities are really still falling on mom or the woman of the household. Uh, and with 2020, if you still have a full-time job, you now, as was mentioned, have three jobs. <laughs> you have multiple jobs, not just your children, but also your work. So I, I wanna understand beyond having uh, directors or uh, women on boards, how can employers support women, especially in this environment, which is likely going to persist for some time? How can we help women a little bit more uh, men currently are not graded on the same scale as women are. Most of our colleagues are also fathers and husbands, and yet they just don't have that same level of grading. And so, Simona, I'd like to hear your perspective. Well, I wish I, I have a magic wand and I can fix this, but let me just pull a couple of ideas here. First of it, you know, uh, let's start with pay. Uh, women are still paid 78 cents to the dollar in comparison to men. I think employers need to be deliberate about equity. Straightforward, in my opinion. It hasn't been happening for various reasons. You know, companies are obviously, uh, you know, very deliberate because many a times women start at the lower level. So when you are hired at the lower level, you, you have leverages when you are hired, right? So you have to advocate for yourself when you're landing a job. Uh, I'm not saying that there, it's downhill from then, but it pretty much, you know, you have the highest leverage when you start. So your starting positions have to be equitable. And then um, flexibility. Patty man, uh, mentioned that you've got to be flexible. You've got to um, 
allow for white space in the calendar. I'm not going to call my employee in the middle of the day expecting that they pick up the phone for me. I, mean, I, I have to put some boundaries on myself. The fact that I'm working and I'm driven doesn't mean that they're on the same level of, of um, commitment or at this moment in time, they might have something else going on. So I respect their calendars. I respect their statuses. I encourage them to uh, finish every meeting within 45 minutes. Nothing goes more than 45 minutes. No meeting Fridays. Again, white space in the calendar. It's about trust, you know. I don't need to see them talking to me every single waking moment of their day. It's it's about the deliverable. It, it's about the outcome as opposed to the time we spend together. But look what this year has taught us, right? The norm is gone, right? Yeah. Everybody's working from home and productivity is through the roof, right? And so the the normal of, you know, going into work eight by eight to five or whatever it may be, we have to think outside the box now, right? We all have to think outside the box and we can still be productive, still have a life and take care of kids, but also be, you know, focused and delivering what we need to for work. So I think, I think it's going to change in terms of the expectations and flexibility around work. And I think uh, that hopefully will give opportunity for more women, hopefully, uh, to stay in and, and focus on in the workforce, right? Because I think the work environment and more and more organizations are going to go into remote working. I think we'll give, hopefully we'll provide that flexibility for more women to stay in.